Amen. 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 Amen.
When God said that as he gave to man, who God was talking about, and also Genesis chapter um, 6, verse 5 to 7, the same people that God said he created in his image and likeness are the same, is it the same people that God said he regrets that he created them? If somebody, if somebody regret of doing something, which means you can easily say that the person made a mistake. No. Amen. So the question is, did God make a mistake? No. <laughs> if I regret, I'm looking at the face of Eric and say, Eric, you are too smart, which means I made a mistake. Of telling him that he's smart. So if God regret, and he was so regretful that he made man that God came to a place of realization that what I made has disappointed me. So I want us to know the man that disappointed God and the man that God created in his image. There are two people. I'm going to break that for you. Can I break it down for you? Can I make it say, Papa, work it out, work it out. Okay, how will bring it out? Amen. Amen. So you see, right? We as human beings, when we want to know that somebody is our son or our daughter, we go to the hospital and what the man does, the man does a DNA. And for him for him to, to verify or to know that this son or this child is my son. So in the earth realm, in the realm of men, when a man wants to know that somebody is a son or a daughter, the man has to take the child to the hospital and that they will take in at the blood of the man. I know what they, they take blood, right? All of them works. <laughs> so, um, so they 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 either take the blood of the man or it is his saliva and then make sure the man wants to know that this child is my child. I, I want to make sure that this woman is not fooling me around. Am I communicating here? So when the man wants to know that somebody is a son or child, the man has to do a DNA. But when we come to the kingdom of God, right? If God wants to know that somebody is a son or daughter, God looks at the image. Amen. The DNA that God looks at is the image and the likeness. So how can I tell that you are my image and my likeness? When God look at you and I, we must we must have His image and His likeness. That is how the Spirit. That is how the Spirit is. What well, is able to look into and to diagnose and to know that you belong to the kingdom of God, that, that you are part of God's children. If God cannot see His image or His likeness in you, maybe you are a mistake in the kingdom of God. Am I communicating here? Amen. So you see, the likeness of a man and the image. What is the word likeness? You act alike. Behavior. behavior. So you see, when your behavior does not match God, probably God cannot identify with you if you belong to Him. Amen. Am I communicating here? Amen. Dave, am I communicating here? Amen. So, as a, as a children of God, we must have the likeness of God and we must have the image of God. So, you know, sometimes when a woman, did, let's say, for example, when you look at uh, my daughter, um, Sabina, her, her son, that boy, if you look at her, the mother and the boy, you can easily tell that, that boy that is a man already. They look, they look alike. You, you can't look at him. Hello? <laughs> look, look at the boy right there. And look at the mama. Don't, don't they look alike? They look the same. So, you so, I don't even have to ask questions. I can look at the boy and I look at the mother and I can easily tell this is not my prophetic. This is not my prophetic, you know, intuition or prophetic anointing. With, with, my, with my physical sight, I could tell that this boy is a man, he's a son of this woman because. 
because they look alike. So God created man in his image so that when we live on this earth, when people see us, they may see our Father who is in heaven. This is David. This is, this is 
say me, but it is safe. Hello? This is David, and this is David. This is the spirit of David, and this is the flesh of David. So now, God said, for David to be able to operate and have dominion for scripture, the word of God, to fulfill in the life of David, God had to make a flesh, the, the flesh of David. So now we are one. Yeah. David is in him. Mm. When the Bible said in him we live, mm. and move and have our being, mm. I'm not communicating here. Mm. So now David is in David. Mm. Okay, sir. Mm. Say David is in David. Mm. If you don't, if you don't talk, I'll close you. Say, say David is in David. If you don't feel a woman, you can't even love 
Women are powerful. They are very powerful. The power of woman is higher than the power of man. That is why when God saw what he did, God said to give you, I will put you under the man. He said, from today, your desire shall be of your husband. In other words, before God said that, the desire of a woman was not for a man. Am I communicating? That is why it doesn't matter what the woman has. If the woman don't have a man in her life, she's not complete. Any woman that will tell you I don't need a man, she's lying to a teeth. Huh? Yeah, it's true. I'm telling you, I didn't. You say, God, man. You say, God, man. You think your money has. Let me go. Say, hey, listen to me. God told Adam that Adam, you can eat everything, but this thing, don't touch it. The thing that you touch it, you shall show you that. So, brother Paul, in the mind of God, God did it, it was not in God's plan for giving the spirit, the spirit man and the physical man to die. Because spirit can die. Alright. Spirit can die. You let me tell you something. When you speak the Bible, you come to realize that when God when God cares them, God never cares the spirit, he cares the physical man. He said, You came out of the ground. And the, he said, you came out of the dust, and the dust shall you return. Yeah. Amen. Come on. Sorry. In other words, when Satan deceived, we say that Satan deceived Adam and Eve. Satan only deceived their physical body, their flesh. Yes, sir. Yeah. Come on. Amen. Amen. Am I communicating here? Amen. I'm telling you some deep stuff here. Yes. So you see, look at Eve. If you, I love you, you're my wife. I said, but the flesh of my flesh is the bone of my bone. So if the same man came to deceive you, and you ate the food, all you could have done is to come to me out of your heart and say, Babe, I made a mistake. I ate the food. Please, now I see that I'm naked. Don't eat it. You know, he said, It's so sweet. <laughs> Because Adam could not identify with Eve based 
on the spirit. But he, he identified with Eve based on his flesh. If I'm preaching this message in a big church, they'll give me a big dollar. <laughs> yes, sir. I'm not going to here. Yeah. I'm telling you the truth. So, so the Bible said, I want this to be carefully. The Bible said, and Adam and his wife, they ate the fruit. That is why God, God said to Adam, the day that you eat the fruit, you shall surely die. God was, not, God was not talking about the death of the spirit. But God was talking about the death of the flesh. Because it was not in the plan of God for this flesh to die. God wanted us to live forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Am I communicating here? Amen. So even though, listen, even though we are born again, Holy Ghost still fire baptized, we speak in tongues, but the curse that God placed on the flesh, God has not removed the flesh. The Bible, I told you guys the other time, I said salvation is in three dimensions. We are saved. We have been saved. And we shall be saved. So what is saved? Your spirit. When, when you give your heart to God, God connect back to your spirit. Am I communicating here? So now, what is being saved is, is the five senses, the soul. And the soul is tied to the body. They are white. So the last thing that will be saved, the Bible said, and, and, and mortality shall put on immortality. <laughs> mortality shall put on so, so, so that is how Adam and Eve was in the garden. They are mortality put on immortality. And because they have on immortality, nothing can kill them. Say, I said, say, nothing can kill them. That is why it is very important that when you become a Christian, you must learn how to allow your spirit to take over your body so that your spirit can bring your body under submission. Am I communicating? Oh, put your hand up for Jesus. Hallelujah. I'm good, I'm good. I'm good. That's why the devil wanted to fight. I'm telling you. Yes, you know <laughs> say amen. amen. I will say amen. amen. So the Bible said, God said to Adam, the day that you eat food, you shall surely die. The Bible said when, the, when, when Adam and his wife ate the food, the Bible said God came to town. God came to town. You see, let me tell something. I want to tell you, we have three kinds of men that, that, that God made. They are in a, in a different class. Say amen. amen. I, I, want, I want to teach you about the class of Adam the class of Jesus and the class of the new man, which is mortality, putting on immortality. Amen. I'm telling you, when I'm in the house, I learn, I learn. Amen. Say amen. 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 So now, what is you talking about carefully? So, now when God said in Christian that he created that man, God was not talking about the one that has his image. Or the one that has his likeness. Because you see, uh, when, when man, the spirit being of man, was married to the flesh, automatically the flesh also put on the image of Christ. Amen? Amen. Can I say that again? Amen. When the spirit, God put in the, in, the, in the man that he made, automatically, because they become one. So automatically, what the spirit is, that is what the body is. I'm not coming here. Amen. So when man, the Bible said, and Adam and his wife ate the fruit and they realized that they were naked. Nakedness only comes in your life when you disobey God. Because, right, when they were in the garden, they never knew that they were naked. In other words, what was covering them for them not to know that they were naked? It was the presence of his glory. Yes, sir. The glory of God covered them and they could not see that they were even naked and they were not ashamed. So in other words, as much, listen, nakedness brings shame and shame brings rejection and shame also brings fear. When Adam heard that God was coming, Adam hid himself and the Lord said, Adam, where are thou? And said, Lord, I heard your voice and I 
was afraid because I'm wicked. And the Lord said, Who told you? <laughs> so you see, bro, it is time to reason that what, did, what happened, what is going on is all about knowledge. God said, Who told you? <laughs> it is knowledge and understanding. So in other words, Adam and his wife, they had knowledge of something that God didn't want them to know. <laughs> That's why God said, who told you that you are naked? The day that you find out that you are naked, which means you are disobeyed God. So disobedience brings exposure, nakedness, and knowledge that you are supposed to know. So what was God trying to hide from the flesh? You see, the knowledge, the knowledge that Satan introduced to man is not that the spirit didn't know. In the spirit, because man was spirit, but God was trying to limit the flesh of man. Am I communicating? So, when the devil said to him, God knows that the day that you eat this fruit, your eyes will open, and you know good and what? And you shall become like God. They are already God. They are already God. But the day that they, they disobeyed God, it took them from the realm of God to the realm of humanity. To the realm of their flesh. So you see, they were no longer interested about their spirit, but they were interested about their shape, their flesh. Come on, that's the word. Okay. So, how can God restore you and I? How can God restore me? How can God restore me? Talk to me say, how can God restore me? You must, number one, understand the difference between your flesh and your spirit. You must understand that. Say, I must understand that. Okay, after said, why was God, why was God interested of creating man? Why was God interested of creating man? To make man God over the face of the earth. God wants to make man God over the face of the earth. So you see, because God wanted to be a God, and he wanted to be the prince or the princess, that you have his image and likeness of, God made you that you may have dominion on the earth. Many believers, we are Christians. We serve God. We go to church, but we talk like an unbeliever. Yes, sir. We behave like unbelievers. Let me tell you something. If, if my father is Reverend Antonio, and Reverend Antonio has have about four billion dollars. And it's back of back of America. Take it, Lord. In the name of Jesus. <laughs> Hello? Amen. And I'm his first born. Not the last one. First one. <laughs> because Adam was the first born of God. So do you think, Brother Paul, I will be walking around like somebody who is poor? The way I talk will be different. Amen. The way I dress will be different. My mood of living is different. My environment shall be what? If I need peace, I have peace. Any car that I want to buy, I can do what? Come on, talk to me. Any servant that I need, I can what? Why? Because my father is rich. My father is different. Right now, the president of America is Dubai. Every opportunity that anybody can get, his children are getting it. Yes, sir. All the contract in this country, they have it. Yep. They are, they, his family will be rich before he comes down. Yes, sir. Am I communicating here? Yes. So you see, whenever you, you, your father is a king, or a, a, your mother is a queen, automatically you are a princess or a prince. Yes, sir. 
Am I communicating here? So now, now what is? The spirit of man is still with God. But now I want us to talk about, about the flesh. Because now God said it's repenting that he created the flesh. God said he's repenting. Many of us, the life that we live, God, God said, my, my. I, I am disappointed in the way you live your life. Yes, sir. You God is disappointed of the way you are living your life. How do you talk? How do you present yourself? Are you a child of the living God? How do you behave in society? When the guy pour the water on me, believe me, at the moment, I'm too flash. No. <laughs> When you put the water me, you see that I, I, I want to I want to listen, right? You saw me, you saw me, right? I was only touching his face. But something helped me. So, I, I, something just helped me. Because when I was coming all this morning, I prayed. I was in good spirit. I'm coming to church. When I pick up mama, he, they were seeing me worshiping in my car. Because I was in good spirit. All of a sudden, all hell of the rules. And the Lord, when I look at myself, when I came here and I saw myself, me stopping people, I said, Lord, thank you. I have already grown. I'm telling you, I used to be very bad. Very bad. You understand? So I see them now, I'm changing. I'm growing. Hallelujah. <laughs> Let's go. 
unbelief, doubt, rejection, disobedience. The only way that can be hung on the tree, God must be part of that transaction. God must be part of that transaction. Because man and man could be not complete that transaction. Am I communicating here? So you need a girl. The Almighty God. The I am that I am. The ancients of days. The lady of the family. The lion of the tribe of God. He must be involved. As much that I have my divinity. I can overcome my flesh. As much that I have my God in me. I can surely overcome the challenges of yesterday, the troubles of yesterday. It doesn't matter what the enemy brings to me. As much as I have God, if I walk through the forest and the shadows of death, I shall fear no evil, for the Lord is with me. Somebody say, God is with me. The enemy may bring me down. He can only try to bring my flesh down. But the spirit, oh, in the spirit, in the spirit that raised Christ from the dead, living in you, is. Am I communicating here? The same spirit that raised Christ from the dead, dwelling in you, he shall quite alive. I said, he will quite alive. He will bring revival to your flesh. Somebody say, I am restored. I am restored. So now, if 
now the Bible speaks about restoration. What are we restored in? Who are we now? Are we restored in the image of the first Adam or we are restored to the image of God? If I'm restored to the image of God, then guess what? Guess what? You cannot trace who I am by my earthly father. Say, I know who I am. Say, look at them and say, I know who I am. Let's read Psalm 82, verse 1 to 8. And so we open talk to them, verse 34 to 38. Let's go. Psalm 82, verse 1 to 8. God standeth in the congregation of the mighty. The Lord standeth in the congregation of the mighty. Say mighty. Mighty. Oh, look at me. Say mighty. Mighty. I, I, I can't feel you. Say mighty. Mighty. So when the Bible said God stand in the congregation of the mighty, God is not talking about the people in the club. <laughs> talk to me. Talk to me. My brother, hold on. Let me, let me digest this thing. Listen, when the Bible says God stands in the communication of the mighty, it's not talking about the people in the club, or the people in the White House, or the people at your job. The communication is the children of God. We are here like this. We are the communicant of God. We are the communication of God. So when we come to prayer, God spiritually appears and stands in the communication of the mighty. So if God calls me mighty, then I know who you I said, I am not with you. I am not who you say I am. I am mighty. I walk in strength. I walk in power. I walk in glory. Somebody say, I am mighty. Oh, say, I am mighty. God starts in the communication of the mighty.
But that is not what God is talking about. The poor and the needy, you see, we are the first Adam and we are the second Adam. Anybody who is not connected to the second Adam on now, is poor and needy. Not me. I refuse to be poor. I said, I refuse to be poor. So, when you are born in God, you are not poor. You are not needy. Because the Bible said, for I will supply all your needs. Now, now hear this. Did you hear that? So, so listen. 
when, when, I, when you walk on this earth, Mama, please, for people to know that you are the image of God and the likeness of God is based on what you do. Your works. Your works. Say my works. My works. Your works is part of the way you talk. The way you talk. The way you handle things. I'll tell you guys that now I really, I truly believe that I'm a born again Christian. <laughs> Say amen. amen. I truly believe that I'm a born again Christian. So the work of the flesh, your works. In other words, your works hails from your spirit, but it may, it must manifest in the flesh for the people to see. Am I communicating here? Amen. I told Mama Mary the other time, I told her, I said, if you tell me you are a man of God and a woman of God, please, I don't want to see your anointing because there are people who are highly anointed than you in this world. But what will, what will connect me to you is your integrity, your character. Amen. That is your ways. Your ways. Your ways. How do you handle things? How do you talk? There are some of us. Well, our mind is not renewed. The way we think, the way we do things, we, we, we say we are children of God, but we don't have the image of God in us. Amen. And the character of God in us. Amen. Your words are not godly. Your actions are not godly. Right. Are you a godly person? Jesus said, if you don't believe me, that I am the Son of God. Believe the word that the word says. Yes. So you see. It will get to a time that the unbelievers will not believe the miracles that we do. Mm. Oh, they will not believe the miracles. They will look at our character. Yes, yes. Our character. Mm. Some of you, you can talk and talk and before you realize you are saying things that you are not supposed to say. You do things that you are not supposed to do. I want to be like Jesus. I want to talk like Jesus. I want to walk like him. So I always have prison, Lord, help me. When the, when the flesh is weak. Oh, Jesus, God never get rid of the flesh. No, no, no. But you see, he has given us something that is more bigger than the flesh. God. God. is bigger than our flesh. It's bigger than our weakness. It's bigger than anything that we do. You cannot be a believer and say, I hate you, I don't want to talk to you anymore. Which means your flesh is taking over you. I have something against you. You think me that? I said, listen. It is, it is required from you to forgive, but it is not required from you to forget. Amen. Amen. It is required of you to love, but it is never required of you to have a relationship. Come on now, Pastor. Preach that word. So you may, you may hurt me. I choose not to hate you or to hate you. And I choose not to have any relationship with you. But I will love you from afar. Come on, yeah. Come on. That's the word. I will love you from afar. The Bible don't condemn that. Come on, man. There are some people, they are energy shockers. They shock your energy from you. There are some people, they are spirit beggars.
we are going to pray. Stand on your feet. Stand on your feet. I don't know what to say anymore.